اہدن سراط المستقیم اہدن سراط المستقیم is a verse every Muslim repeats five times in a day from the bottom of his heart but a few are endowed with the bounty of the sirat al-mustaqeem and certainly they are the ones who are guided by the one Imam Mahdi of this Ummat a narrative by a person who was guided towards the promise Mahdi and he is our next speaker brother Zishan Beg and he would like to share his journey and trust me that his journey will surely make you cry because tu jisko mil gaya rab usko mil gaya brother zishan beg a graduate in commerce from mumbai university he started his career with his father's manufacturing business gradually he built his own business of international trade personally loves to read collect books and travel and he is and he also has a keen eye for social media platforms and understand that they are one of the most powerful tools of our time they are one of the most powerful tools of our time now may i call upon the stage to share his beautiful journey as his topic is the same my journey towards the promise mehdi assalamu alaikum so a few, few weeks ago i was approached uh by Rahil Rai to speak about my journey towards Imam Zaman. And this put me into a dilemma because uh, the story is very personal and very few people know about this. So after a lot of thought and tawassul with Imam Zaman, here I am. So to introduce myself, I come from a family where my mother's side is Shia and my father's side is not. And uh, I've lived a, very, lived a very large part of my life on the Sunni school of thought. But Allah had destined certain events for me because of which I decided to become a lover and a follower of Alam Muhammad. So it's been a very long journey. To simplify it, I'll uh, break it down into four parts. Stage one, my introduction towards Imam Hussain alayhi salam and his azadari. So I was born in this very large joint family living in a very small house. And when I was just two years old, my father was partially paralyzed. Life got very complicated. The doctors had given up on him. But Alhamdulillah, he survived. And when the doctors asked my mother what was it that she used to recite at the hospital, she said it was Dua'i Mashlul. Later on, after a lot of struggle, my parents shifted to a separate house. By then, I was eight. So since now, we had uh, this newfound space to breathe. That year, in Muharram, my mother started taking me for the Majlis of Imam Hussain. And this is where I got introduced to Karbala, to ahl -Bayt, to the Zari, to the Alam, to the rituals of Karbala and so on. And even though it was a very long time ago, but still, the memories from those times are still afresh. And I could say that that is when I developed my love for Ali Muhammad. So this went on for a few years and every time it was Muharram, we would go for Azadari to this Imam Barga. Stage 2. Life before faith. Life moved on and since I was the only child my parents had, I quickly moved on into my father's family business at a very early age. And this was a very large part of my life where the only religion I had was rushing for the namaz on Fridays and praying. Uh, Jamaat and fasting during the month of Ramadan. But I could say Allah had destined certain events for me because of which I decided uh, to turn towards the path of Ali Muhammad. And this, these things kept me afloat. So, number one, whenever I was passing by any Imam Barga, I would always stop by to pay my respects to the Zari and the Alam. And there is something about the aura of Hazrat Abbas salam, that is just so attractive and that is by the alam. Two, I would always see my mother recite these beautiful duas from the treasures of Ali Muhammad. And I would often see her 
at the window facing the Qibla doing Tawassul with Imam Zaman and even though I was not a Shia but I always believed in the power of those duas of course I knew how Dua Mashlood had saved my father's life and I also believed in that unseen Imam my mother secretly spoke to I would always feel uncomfortable when anything bad was being said about Shiaism I mean the level of ignorance out there regarding the school of Ali Muhammad is really unbelievable and I would try to defend as much as I could for in my heart I always believed that the enemies of Ali Muhammad deserved no place in Islam whoever they may be nevertheless years flew by I was 28 and around this time while everything was going good I started to feel a void in my life which I couldn't explain I mean I had all the comforts in life work was good but still I couldn't find a purpose to wake up in the morning and get going and uh, now this void although it sounds very depressing and it was but after a point of time it became one of the most important inspirations for me a blessing in disguise it drove me to look for something above this material world and now I started to search for its savior who would guide me through this confusion stage 3 recognition through majlis now this is the crucial part it was a Muharram of 2008 when I started attending the majlis of our respected Maulana Atar Sahib and I was very focused and I wanted to learn and I tried to attend as much as I could and in one of those lectures Maulana Sahib very beautifully explained the concept of Nubuvat and Imamat and even though I had some basic information about the Fazail and Masayab of Ahlabayat and some basic information about the Panjitan but the broader concept of Imamat and the existence of 12 Imams was new to me I learned what Isna Shari actually meant and I learned a lot and during these nights I started to develop a deeper attachment with the Farshi Azam and uh, in my mind I started to realize that these things happening right now and these events happening right now in my life had been there with me forever and I don't know how but somehow I always believed that I would be here someday and that Azadari would be a part of my life carrying on there were these uh, also these uh, rational thoughts about uh, the living mom for example I thought how could Allah with all his mercy leave me alone in this world without a savior to deal with somebody as powerful as a shaitan who will deviate me and then Allah will burn me in hell for my sins it doesn't work that way and also the talks about the Quran being enough never made any sense to me I mean you couldn't get through simple school books without a teacher how could you ever understand the Quran the Quran is a divine revelation of Allah so obviously you need a divinely appointed authority from Allah to teach you that book and nobody else can so I gathered all the information I could and once you start looking there are several verses in the Quran that talk about Imamat and likewise in the books of traditions moving on a few months passed by and I happened to travel abroad for some work so one day on my way to work I got into this cab and the driver was playing the know of Imam Hussain alayhislam. and it was very unusual why because in a country like that things like these did not happen and maybe the Masav in that Noha became a catalyst that later on I decided to visit this close by Imam Barga in that country so I had a rough address to it so I was walking around the streets searching for it and while looking out I spotted the alam of Hazrat Abbas alayhislam, on a building and that is how I reached my destination so Majlis was about to start so I sat through then there was the uh, Azadari, the Tabur felt very nice I did not know anybody there no known faces and sometimes being alone in a crowd really helps it was like, like me my Lord Muhammad and Ala Muhammad got a lot of time to think about things so the next day I went there again and while sitting there in that Majlis I realized that everything I ever wanted was right there in front of me I mean I, it's not like I had any doubts before this 
and i know i was very late in life but still that was my moment of clarity and that night i went back to where i was staying and for the first time in my life i recited my namaz the shia way i knew very little but i tried and after coming back from the trip i asked my mother to teach me the names of the 12 imams and the wife faraj and may allah increase his mercy on my mother for instilling the faith of ali muhammad in me and also on my father for everything that he's done for me stage 4 conclusion so to summarize a few triggers in the speech i could say one the prayers of my parents two the majlis of imam hussein three attachment to everything that is attached to imam hussein and four guidance is only from allah it is allah that guided me and saved me and whenever i reached out to him he never failed me and he himself says in the quran call upon me and i will answer you and he did answer me and from then on life was very different the struggles the ease that followed i felt as if i had entered into the shade of mercy of allah and that mercy is none other than muhammad and ali muhammad the wilaya of amir al mukminin ali ibn abi talib and the recognition of the 12th imam and there were many uh, blessings that followed the best amongst them was the ziyarats of ali muhammad these ziyarats in a way rearranged and re- reshaped my life in ways i couldn't imagine so to conclude for me it started with the days of muharram and even even though it was occasional but the presence of ali muhammad was always there in my life and without a doubt that the no and the taxi and that alam on the building that guided me were no coincidence allah has placed his hujja on his lands and it is this hujja who guided me and saved me from deviation while i did not even know him while i did not even know him and it worth pondering how allah will actually save those who work to promote the cause of imam e zaman and just to remind myself one should each day strive to work for imam e zaman search for imam e zaman and pray for imam e zaman and everything else will just fall into place and i want to close by remembering the beautiful words of imam husain alayhi salam oh lord what did he gain who lost you and what did he lose who found you salawat